Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share with you some techniques that I use to create some foliage brushes. You can use this for bushes, you can use this for leaves on a tree, you can use this to create a swamp creature. Your imagination is the limit. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a blank 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel canvas at 600 pixels per inch. And um, I want to make sure that that background is also transparent. And I've co covered this in a previous video in terms of making your own brushes from the custom shape tool. And I'll put a link to that in the description here. I'm not going to go over all of those details again. But what I do want to show you is I am going to use the custom shape tool here. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some flowers. So what I'll do is just to keep things interesting, I'm going to pick this starry flower here. Make sure that you have some kind of color that's not white something that you can see and I've got uh, something that looks pointed like this. I will make a copy of it by holding down the option key and I will transform it and maybe what I'll do with this one is I'll add a little bit of perspective just to kind of distort it. You know like how when you look at various trees and leaves you know the um, th there is going to be some rotation and some tilt so let me go ahead and do that here. And then just for giggles, I'll just hit Command J. That's another way of duplicating. And I'll do the same thing here. What I'll do is I'll use perspective like this. And um, I'll use a little bit of distort and basically create something like this. The idea being that I have you know, large, medium, and small shapes. And maybe for this initial pattern right here, I'll just do the same thing. I'll add a little bit of perspective. There we go. So now I can take those three layers and merge them, hitting Command or Control E. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna serve as the basis for a new brush that I'm going to create. So if I go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, I'll just go ahead and call this KMS Sharp Leaves. I don't have any really good names for this, I'm sorry. So that's basically my brush. If I activate the brush tool, you can see that that brush shows up, it's huge. So what I wanna do is let's go back to the selection tool and let's open up a brand new canvas. I'll make a 5100 by 3300 pixel canvas, 600 pixels per inch. That's a landscape canvas. I always work in 600 pixels per inch, just an old habit. And now if I try to use this brush, you can see that the initial result, like if I tap, I'm getting something that looks like a bush or a brush, right? But when I try to, to paint with it like a traditional brush, it's no bueno. So let's figure out some settings that we can alter to give this a little bit more of a natural feel. Let's open up our brush settings. And the first thing I want us to do is, let's look at the tip shape. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of curvature to this. You can always test this out. And let's turn on the shape dynamics. Let's just alter the size, the angle, and the roundness jitter, and also flip X. And what that will do is that gives us the ability to have this brush flip flop. You can see it's kind of flip flopping here, right? Um, and that's okay. I mean, so far, you know, it's all basically the same color. And um, what I want to do now is I want to introduce something called color dynamics. With color dynamics, I can use this brush and it gives me a range of values. So that looks kind of cool. I'm getting some light, medium, and dark values in there. If I adjust the size of my brush by using the left bracket key by making it smaller, you can see that I can have some really cool variation. That might be too much here, so you can always crank this huge editor down. Right? But what's important is as you're making this brush, you want to make you know, have a series of large, medium, and small shapes. If everything is the exact same size in your brush, it's gonna look like you used a brush on it, right? So by playing with this huge editor, you can also play with saturation a little bit too. I'll just go ahead and create another one here. And then you can always play with setting the size a little bit smaller or a little bit larger here. So, you know, you can experiment and you can play with that, you know, try some dark, medium, and light values. You can play with the, you know, if I crank this hue all the way out to say 60%, I get way more colors. 
And that might be something that you want. I don't know. But, you know, generally speaking, I don't go that crazy with it. I might just bump it down to about 20% or so. So, pretty cool, right? You can, you can easily see how this can turn into a bush or a tree or something along those lines. But we're not done yet. Let's take a look at um, scattering. Uh, let's just add a little bit of scatter. Okay. And then uh, let's now look at, um, let's see, I want to play with dual brush. So what dual brush will do is if I'm using this brush, you can see that it's fairly, you know, you can see basically there's a pattern. It looks cool, nothing wrong with it. But if I now select a different brush, that has, that introduces some variability. So basically it has a second brush influence my first brush. And the result is I get something that looks a lot more organic. And that's what I typically use for making my foliage brushes. Um, so I've got a bunch of other different brushes here that could be sketching brushes. You can just try them out to your heart's content and see what looks good. And then when you're, let's just pick a different color. Let's just go ahead and try red, right? So you can, you can see how that gives you some light, medium, and dark values. It, it infers some volume in there. Uh, and then once you're happy with how it looks, you can always go up and you can just save that as a tool preset. Let's go ahead and call this um, uh, sharp, KMS sharp leaves oak tree, right? And now I've got this brush and I can use it to my heart's content. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, give that a try. Let me know what you think about this tip. It's a short and sweet one, but I think it'll have a lot of range. You can certainly do a lot with some of the custom shape tools that are already built in. So give that a try. As always, I hope you find these videos to be of value and I look forward to sharing more techniques with you in the next video. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking this video. Every like and every subscription really, you know, um, you know, touches me because it's like I really feel like um, what I'm doing here is worthwhile. So thank you so much for your support. I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.